fair fighting rule number four, no interruptions. So I'm going to try and be intentionally generic when talking about interruptions, and that's because every conversation is different. And speaking in specific terms about what to do or what not to do wouldn't be practical for every situation. So please, just bear with me, and at the end of the video, you can kind of meld all the observations and suggestions into something that you feel would be a fair and balanced approach. When a person gets interrupted, a number of things can come into play. For example, there's the notion that the person doing the interrupting feels that what they have to say is more important than what's already being said. Or it could be that the interrupter feels that a misstatement has been made and it's too important not to correct immediately by an interruption. Another example might be that the interruption is intended to distract the speaker or move the conversation in a different direction. Now, at a minimum, an interruption can, even unintentionally, cause the speaker to lose their train of thought. Another thing that's common is that the person that gets interrupted, especially during a dispute, can feel like it's simply rude to have been interrupted. In an effort to minimize such interruptions, I think it's all right to start off by saying to your partner something like, I'd like to request that you give me time to share my thoughts without interruption. I'll give you plenty of time to respond, but I just feel I need to make a couple of points without getting sidetracked. Speaking of getting sidetracked, um, although it's maybe technically not considered an interruption, it seems appropriate to mention here that you doing something that's distracting to your partner while they're speaking to you is just as unacceptable as verbally interrupting them. Like rolling your eyes or staring off in the distance with a disinterested look or physically turning your back on your partner. I actually saw that happen on a city street in Shanghai with hundreds of people walking by. Some people would walk by and look at them. Others would just totally ignore the couple. But here was this woman just talking in a really loud, angry voice. And her partner was two or three feet away with his back totally to her. You know, I watched from a distance for about five or 10 minutes and he never once tried to look at her. And she never once tried to walk around and face him. It, it is not a communication technique that I recommend. And it certainly did not seem to be working for them either. I'll give you a personal example of why I think it's important to acknowledge what it is that your partner's saying to you, as opposed to turning your back on them while they're speaking. When my wife used to talk to me about something that had been upsetting her, she would often repeat and repeat again whatever it was that was upsetting her. And it didn't seem to matter that I would give her an occasional head nod. It was that repeating that would just drive me bananas. Well, come to find out, what she wanted was for me to give her a verbal confirmation of what was being said. Like, she wanted to hear me say, okay, all right. I hear you. She tells me that if she had simply heard that verbal confirmation, she would not have felt the need to keep repeating whatever it was she was saying. We're all different, right? Find out what works for your partner. I just want to give you one more example of a nonverbal interruption. 
although it's not a partnership example, I do think it's illustrative. And even though it happened probably 30 years ago, it's, it's still with me. So you can imagine the effect it had on me at the time. It was back when I was in the service. I was an enlisted airman and I was giving a, an air threat briefing to an air crew. And there was probably a dozen of us in total and we had gathered in a fairly confined briefing room. Well, somewhere in the midst of that briefing, one of the air crew, a second lieutenant, decided that was the moment his fingernails needed clipping. So for the next couple of minutes, I believe his nail clipping got more attention than my threat briefing. I mean, he literally got everyone's head in the room to turn towards him. After the briefing, you know, I actually had air crew members come up to me and apologize for his behavior. My point is this. I want you to try and refrain from all types of distractive behavior and give your partner respectful attention. All right, let's get back to interruptions. After I sidetrack myself, all right, Here's a suggestion on how to avoid interrupting your partner. Take written notes while they're speaking. You know, this is going to allow you to better and more fully respond to your partner's concerns. And on top of that, it's going to act as a compliment to your partner that you care enough to take notes. Admittedly, the idea of no interruptions is not without limits, of course. Each person needs their fair share of time to express themselves. And if one of you is carrying on for an extended period of time or is addressing too many concerns, that could possibly disadvantage the other person. If you find yourself in a situation like that, I feel it is appropriate to interrupt and say, you know, although it's not my intention to interrupt, there's a lot being said here and I'd like to jot some notes down so that I can better respond to you. You know, the point is you're trying to find some kind of common sense balance and find out what works in your situation. At some point, your partner is going to stop talking. Now, if you're not sure if they're done speaking to you or maybe they're just gathering their thoughts, you know, if you're not sure, ask them, you know, ask them if they're done. Ask them if it's time for you to respond. You know, you can't read their mind, so be polite and ask. You know, that's what communication is. This back and forth of uninterrupted conversation allows each of you to get a sense that the conversation is balanced. I think it also allows each of you to get a sense that you're in control of the conversation. I hope this video has helped in some positive way and thank you very much for watching.